Hello and welcome back to my channel. <sighs> okay, we have a lot to get into today. Um, so this video is going to be the second in the series that I'm doing on the whole Criminal Minds cast and how some of them have done some problematic things, me explaining what they did, and my opinions on if I think it's problematic or not. Now, before we get into Paget Brewster, who played Emily on Criminal Minds, which is what this video is going to be about, I have two topics I want to cover. First thing is just want to give an update on the Matthew um, SA allegations. And from what I have found is that there hasn't been anything else. I've been searching the internet, see if I can find any articles about it, any more tweets written about it. None. The only thing I found was the same um, thread of tweets that I'm using as evidence in that I'm going through this whole entire series. That's the only thing I could find. And even that, that's from 2020. So I haven't heard anything else. The most recent essay I got essay allegations were from July 17th and that was the one I went over in the first video. So that's all for the Matthew Way Gubbler a Googler update. Couldn't find anything else. But moving into what I found, um this doesn't really have to do with the cast itself. It has to do with uh, the show and other people that are a part of the show. And this is article I found. This one is from 2019, September 23rd. And there's another article that's about the same situation that was made in 2020 that I'm also going to go over real quick. And this is a Criminal Minds crew member sues over... <coughs> Harassment by a supervisor. You know, I, in a very inappropriate harassment by a supervisor. And it's saying that it's claiming the director of photography, Greg St. John's, touched the plaintiff's body in a very inappropriate manner on a number of occasions throughout the plaintiff's employment and the paperwork goes into graphic details about the incidents. St. John's as well as Entertainment Partners Enterprises are named as defendants in the case as well. And he also included in the filing was the alleged pattern of harassment directed at Borrow, I believe that's how his name is pronounced, is included instance of St. John screaming at him and threatening him with demotions or even termination. More shocking details include the plaintiff claiming other employees were wrongfully terminated in retaliation for complaining about harassment, an essay for harassment, and discrimination by defendant St. John. And the suit includes information related to the SH St. John's touch the plaintiff in a SH manner approximately two to three times a week on average from the time the plaintiff was hired through approximately October 2019, said the lawsuit. The paperwork goes into much more details of the alleged abuse by St. John's directed at Dubora. So I found that very interesting because that I literally did not hear about this at all, which is crazy because this is, it has articles written over it, but these websites are like not really known websites, I don't think, because this website is called Showbiz Cheat Sheet. Never heard of that website in my life. 
actually also says the plaintiff claims <coughs> Dubora was also kept from taking time off to take care of his was also kept from taking time off to take care of his daughter in her life threatening condition. He also says he was invited to take a promotion at work and then considered that if he accepted he would be fired. Also, continue on the story, I'm going to be <coughs> talking about the person who who was um SH by the person here. I'm going to be naming him as the plaintiff because I can't pronounce the name and I don't want to keep mispronouncing it so I'm just going to say the plaintiff from now on and he also detailed in the paperwork that his colleagues that went along with the harassment directed towards the plaintiff didn't say anything but were rewarded with gifts and greater assignments. Variety reported in 2018 that St. John's was able to keep working on the set even after a human resource probe by the state of California. The investigation was launched after the accusation that St. John's SH and retaliated against a past employee. The report by Variety said 19 former or current criminal minds workers said they worked in a toxic environment, including St. John's, groping and physically threatening male staffers on set those who complained were promptly fired. The plaintiff's lawsuit says St. John's inflicted emotional stress intentionally and makes other claims against him, including assault, battery, and SA. The paperwork also makes claims against every defendant, including discrimination, SH, harassment, retaliation, and failure to investigate or prevent and negligent inflictions of the plaintiff's emotional distress. So that is the whole one from 2019, which I read the whole, I just read the whole thing, but if you want to read it again for yourself, I will leave it in the description box below. Now, on to the second paragraph, which is about the same thing. But this one says, California sues over alleged SM on criminal mindset. I will be writing down the um, keywords of what I'm saying so you can understand what I'm saying. But by SM, I mean misconduct, but in a very, very inappropriate manner, if you get what I mean. And this was published May 27th, 2020. Also, if you can see the reflection of the glasses, my bad. I wasn't wearing my glasses in the other video because I didn't want a reflection from the light to show. But I can't see myself in the camera to see if I'm making sure everything's good if I'm not wearing my glasses. So, my bad for that. And it says, State of California officials are suing Disney and CBS bosses over a seven cinematographer on TV show Criminal Minds who was allegedly allowed to grope male crew members by employers who condoned his conduct. According to a lawsuit filed on Tuesday by California's Department of Fair Employment and Housing, Gregory St. John's is accused of touching multiple men and retaliating against those who spurned his advances. The creative was fired from the show in 2018 after crew members complaints became public but according to deadline he had engaged in a pattern of sh discrimination and retaliation for 14 years he is accused of touching kissing and caressing numerous men and is alleged that his employers had an actual and constructive knowledge of st john's abusive conduct and yet allowed it to continue unchecked no necessary steps to prevent sex-based harassment and discrimination were taken over the years, nor were appropriate corrective acts as the lawsuit continues. Instead, the executives fired anyone who resisted or who tactfully evaded St. John's advances or abuse. The legal case says more than a dozen men were fired at St. John's request. 
DFEH officials are seeking damages for St. John's victims. Representatives from CBS and Disney have yet to comment on the lawsuit. St. John's has also not addressed the allegations. So that is the whole entire second article. And just like the one before, I will be leaving a link to it in the description down below. Now on to the actual topic on the video after I just got that first part. Now going back to the thread. Like I said, the next person we'll be talking about is Paget Brewster. And the first thing is Paget Brewster has been called out recently. I guess she's been called out very recently. And let's start with the first thing. Okay. At first, she was very quiet on BLM and went days and days without speaking up, no matter how much fans encouraged her to say something. Here it says finally she said something, but it was incredibly insensitive and didn't even acknowledge the innocent black people who were being murdered. This was it. She cares more about the looting and the destroyed businesses which can be which can be brought back more than the black lives which can't be. Now I am going to be reading what she tweeted and then giving you my opinion. says, I'm so sad that this is our country now. Some people are justifying their outrage. Some are abusing an honorable cause. And some are benefiting from all of this tragedy. I don't have an answer. I only have questions that I no longer believe would be answered. Sadly, protesters who want change don't loot. Looters destroy family businesses for a toaster and don't care about legacy. Uh, like a slate of change. Twitter asked what's happening and I don't I think know what is happening now. I believe most of us are good. Be peaceful, intelligent, and effective. So apparently that is the only thing that she said. And my opinion on that is kind of like I kind of agree with the person who made this thread was saying. And that is, you know, I understand like the looting was obviously like kind of bad you know like destroying businesses who some businesses that got destroyed didn't even do anything you know so like I understand that you know but what I'm kind of stuck on is the fact that she acknowledged this but she didn't acknowledge the actual black people that were being killed and murdered she did not say anything about that. She was just worried about the big businesses being looted. I feel like she could have said something about both. So that's my take on that. That's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, very upsetting that she didn't mention that. So I feel like that was kind of very upsetting. Now moving on to... Her cultural appropriation depicted in the photos below so like I said these photos are in the thread if you want to see them and she was appropriating Native American Romani culture and her microdism in all these three photos which I could definitely say cultural, pro cultural appropriation of any race is not okay. And the fact that she did it and never addressed it, never said anything, really says a lot about her and her character. And I feel like that's something that she should have addressed. And stuff like this isn't funny. So that's my opinion on that way. And now there was this tweet that Paget had posted October 2018 and the person who did the thread said this is a tweet from Paget that really rubbed me the wrong way. 
Her intentions may have been pure, but she's evidently claiming that young women and models aren't real women when they are. If you look at the replies, even men were calling her. So what she said in this tweet was, It's very hard to listen to 19-year-old models, Vogue blogs, tabloids, etc. I want stories from grown working real women, and I want stories from those models when they're 45. Women represent more than half this country. Let's make it the country we want. Please vote, ladies. And my opinion on that, honestly, is that, like, reading it the first time, I didn't really think anything of it. But reading it again now and really thinking about it, it also kind of rubs me the wrong way. Because she basically, she literally said she wants stories from grown, working, real women. Basically saying that those 19-year-olds who are speaking their mind, you know, trying to get people to vote and stuff like that aren't real women because they're not old enough, you know. And I don't really understand that. So... That's, that's my opinion on that. And this part basically says right here, it says August 9, 2020. She retweeted this in response to being called out recently. By tweeting this, she sent the body email where she victimized herself and didn't apologize. She even hinted that it's okay for people to vote for Trump. Also, human rights are political issues. She said, hi guys, I left social media because it's a mess. I miss you, miss responding, talking with you, but nothing I can say is good enough, right enough. I don't talk politics because I support everyone casting a vote, even, I, even, even if I disagree with that vote, but I miss what we used to have. I do agree that she, it does sound like she's victimizing herself in this tweet. It definitely does. And she did not apologize. Um, but I don't really... I think the whole she even hinted that it's okay for people to vote for Trump. I'm, I'm not going to go out of my way and say that. I feel like she basically was just saying, like, you know, everybody needs to vote. And whoever you vote for is whoever you vote for type of thing. Like, because you can't force someone to vote for someone else, really. You can't hold, like, a gun to their head and be like, hey, like, vote for this person, you know. So I think, I don't really, that part is not the part I care about. I care about the part that she's victimizing herself and she did not apologize. Okay, so that's all I have on Paget Brewster. Um, yeah, that's all I have on Paget Brewster. And the next video is going to be on Aisha Tyler. So stay tuned for that. Uh, this video, this video is filmed today, which is probably to be considering it's nighttime. It's probably Friday right now because it was Thursday when I started the. So it's probably Friday. Um, I definitely will have this video out by Sunday. Uh, maybe, maybe by Saturday. Maybe a day early, probably. So yeah, because this video is already 18 minutes long. I don't want to make it too too long you know so definitely and that Aisha Tyler is going to take a lot longer for me to talk about things that she did so anyways keep an eye out for my next video after this one like I said all the links for this video will be in the description down below I hope you really guys enjoy the series and yeah see you guys in the next one bye also, leave your opinions in the comments down below. I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say about this one. Especially the allegations of misconduct with that cinematographer that was on the criminal mindset. Because that, that was crazy. I never knew about that. Anyways, like I said, bye.